Hello and welcome to Prostate Cancer Canada's Expert Angle webinar series. This webinar is titled Prostate Cancer Treatment Side Effects for Men Who Have Sex with Men, MSM. And today's guest speaker is Dr. Zekin Bernard Lee, Radiation Oncologist at BC Cancer. As a member of the gay community, Dr. Lee is currently conducting research to address the unique challenges and needs of MSM with prostate cancer. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for joining us today. And I'll now turn this webinar over to you. Thank you for attending today's presentation. Our topic is prostate cancer treatment side effects for men who have sex with men. For the rest of the presentation, I will call them MSM, which mainly include gay and bisexual men. The objectives today are a brief overview on epidemiology, common treatment options and side effects, current limitation on quality of life studies, general themes from qualitative studies, current changes in the medical system, and future direction. The incidence of prostate cancer in Canada is 21,300 cases, and the lifetime risk for a man to develop prostate cancer is about one in seven. However, MSM often have a chosen family which may be in the format of a significant partner or friend. In the situation where there are two men, the chance that one or both men develop prostate cancer is actually one in three to one in four. Surgery and radiation are the main treatment options for prostate cancer. Surgery carries a risk of urinary incontinence, penile shortening, and ejaculation, and erectile dysfunction. Radiation, whether it is external beam or brachytherapy, can potentially cause rectal bleeding and ejaculation and erectile dysfunction. Many patients with prostate cancer treated with androgen deprivation therapy experience weight gain, decreased libido, decreased muscle mass, and erectile dysfunction. Even for patients who opt for active surveillance, there is evidence that they have increased anxiety, and repeat biopsies can also cause pain, bleeding, and infection. Among all of the side effects, the sexual side effects represent the main treatment regret for many prostate cancer patients. The median age at diagnosis for prostate cancer is now about 65, with early diagnosis, survival is 95 to 97%. Patients are therefore living longer and also healthier. In other words, patients are often diagnosed at a time that they could expect to be sexually active for another five, 10 or more years. However, it is only after prostate cancer treatment that many patients come to realize that the sexual performance no longer matching what they had expected prior to the treatment that alone can lead to, lead to regret and disappointment, affecting the ability to cope. There have been quite a few quality of life studies that focus on tracking and monitoring the sexual side effects of prostate cancer treatment with the goal of improving patients' experience with prostate cancer for results of quality of life study to be generalizable data needs to be collected with validated questionnaires. Developing such survey instruments requires a rigorous method with statistical analysis. Only then we can compare different studies from different institutions and countries. For such questionnaires to have the greatest utility, they also need to be patient population specific. Almost all of the quality of life studies so far assessing the impact of erectile dysfunction on men treated for prostate cancer and focus specifically on penile vaginal intercourse because the questionnaires were developed with the dominant heterosexual population in mind. So for the last 10 to 15 years, we have been doing researches that guide physician and patient on sexual side effect, but only for the heterosexual, heterosexual population. In contrast, the knowledge for MSM population with prostate cancer is lagging behind for more than a decade 
because there has been no validated questionnaire to assess and address the sexual quality of life. Developing such a questionnaire has been my main research goal. I have begun my research with a study that I previously published on 15 MSM who had pathologically confirmed diagnosis of prostate cancer and have been treated with surgery or radiation. They had completed some commonly used questionnaires designed for the heterosexual population. We also created some simple questions that focus on MSM sexual practices. Even though the questionnaires used for the heterosexual population suggested similar outcomes for surgery and radiation groups, there were actually differences in sexual practices and satisfaction, which highlight a need for questionnaires designed specifically for MSM population with prostate cancer. One of the first steps to develop a validated questionnaire relevant to any specific population quality of life is to collect qualitative data on their concerns. This involves structured interview followed by content analysis. There have been quite a few qualitative studies that document and highlight the challenges faced by MSM after prostate cancer treatment. I will share some excerpts from my research group. For general sexual side effects, some of the comments we heard from the patients were, it prostate cancer treatment has greatly affected my sexual activity. I basically have no sex. And I've pretty much given up sex after treatment, more or less voluntarily. These are actually quite comparable to comments from the heterosexual population. For erectile dysfunction, we started to notice some differences. I can't really be a top insertive in anal sex unless I take the extra erectile enhancement or dysfunction medication. For MSM who likes to be the insertive partner in anal intercourse, a firmer erection is needed compared to what is needed for penile vaginal intercourse. One patient told us, I still have the option of doing that being receptive and I don't even really need an erection for that. Although it's not all that pleasurable, yes, I can masturbate with a flaccid penis, a bit more stimulation and having an erect penis is probably helpful. So even for MSM who practice receptive anal intercourse, not having a firm erection affects their overall sexual satisfaction. Urinary incontinence is more commonly associated for patients whose prostate cancer has been treated with surgery. However, when a surgeon consults MSM patients on treatment side effects, they may overlook the impact of incontinence on sex. Being incontinent is very disruptive because it's very hard to feel sexual when you are squirting urine all over the place and being aroused does increase the incontinence and it's just not very sexual. For MSM who may have sex in public places or practice oral sex, incontinence, especially during climax, is very concerning. Ejaculation also has a special significance for MSM. In terms of homosexual sex, ejaculate seems to be an important aspect of the culmination of the whole activity. The visualization of ejaculate is a very important part of overall MSM sexual experience. Relationship status also affects how MSM cope with treatment side effects. I've got a constant partner, whereas before it was just random situations. So for me right now, I'm enjoying life a whole bunch better than I did before. I'm very happy with the way things are because I'm with the man that I want to be with. So for MSM in a relationship, they often can find ways to deal with the sexual side effects of treatment by accepting challenges, by accepting changes and challenges as a couple. However, MSM are often single with more fluid relationship status compared to the heterosexual population. I have lost all confidence that I could try it to be in a relationship with anyone. I have gotten older. 
I've gotten uglier, I've gotten fatter, I've gotten flabbier. It's just in my head. That's the way it is. So for single MSM who have sexual side effects, they may give up on trying to build new relationships and in essence, isolate themselves from the community. MSM also have different experiences in dealing with the current medical system and cancer support groups. My GP knew that I was gay. I was not sure if that information filtered through to the urologist. I don't remember specifically telling him, but I may have, but there was never any discussion about homosexual sex, that's for sure. So while a heterosexual patient can discuss sexual side effects freely with their treating physicians, MSM often cannot. Reaching out to support groups is also not easy for them. I feel that I have to hide my homosexuality there in the support group because there are a lot of straight people there and they may not approve. Imagine how sad and depressing it is for a cancer patient having to hide his sexual orientation in a supposedly welcoming environment. This is a key figure from our recent presentation at the annual meeting of the International Academy of Sexual Research in Madrid. The take home message is that the traditional way of looking at sexual activity only based on erectile dysfunction in isolation is not applicable for MSM. The different practices, functions, and relationships are all linked together for them. But there is hope. There has been some evolution in medical school curricula lately to emphasize more education on LGBT health. One study from San Diego County conducted between 1980 to 2017 shows improving attitude towards LGBT. There are also more LGBT focus group and resources available now than ever before. For example, Gay and Bisexual Men Living with Prostate Cancer by Jane Usher is a book dedicated to MSM. Androgen Deparation Therapy by Wasasad and others also contains a chapter specifically for gay men. In order to advance the field, my research group is trying to develop a validated questionnaire to assess the sexual roles for MSM with prostate cancer, which can help them make informed decisions about treatments that can impact their sexual function. We have already recruited over 150 participants from a target of approximately 200 and only need about 50 more participants. So if you're a prostate cancer patient between the age of 40 and 75, who is in the MSM population, please visit our online survey. If you know of anyone who may be eligible, please, please encourage him to participate, to complete the survey as well. There is a chance to win a $50 certificate. Here are the references for my presentation. Before this presentation is over, I want to share one final thought. During my research, this quote has left me a strong impression. It helped to know that I'm not the only gay person with prostate cancer. During the HIV and AIDS epidemics, in the absence of traditional family support, many MSN bonded together. This created a community and a voice. However, for prostate cancer, maybe because it directly affects MSM sexuality, it is often not shared or discussed. So for many MSM with prostate cancer, they actually do not know any other MSM with similar experiences. I hope that by doing more research, I can help raise awareness of prostate cancer in the MSM population. It is already bad to have a cancer diagnosis and no one should really have to go through that alone. With your help, we can change that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee, for sharing this very helpful information. And at this time, I would like to remind our viewers that if you're looking for further information regarding prostate cancer care, please visit our website where you can download or order free copies of our various resources. And finally, we kindly ask that you take a minute to complete a short survey
following this webinar. Your feedback is important and much appreciated. If you're interested, interested in viewing more webinars, please visit prostatecancer.ca slash expert angle. Once again, thank you, Dr. Lee. This now concludes today's presentation, and we thank you all for joining.